in general, solving dynamical problems in quantum mechanics is very difficult, especially when you want to describe a system of many particles. In principle, you have the Schrodinger equation for pure states, or more generally, the von Neumann equation if you want to potentially explore mixed states. These equations tell you how to evolve a quantum state in time. But a key ingredient to understand in these equations is the Hamiltonian. In practice, um, the task of dealing with the majority of Hamiltonians uh, one might be interested in, either analytically or computationally, uh, this task is in general quite hard. So unsurprisingly, there are a large number of interesting open questions in the world of research on topics treating dynamics analytically, computationally, or experimentally. There are a few interesting physical settings one might be interested in in studying dynamics. One of my personal favorites is a quantum quench. You could imagine cooling a system down to its ground state, the ground state being its lowest energy eigenstate. This state is independent of time, of course. If we then instantaneously changed the Hamiltonian uh, that governed our system, say by changing an applied field, then our ground state will no longer be an eigenstate of the new Hamiltonian, and thus our system will no longer be in equilibrium. This example is in the realm of pure state dynamics, a topic I'm interested in for research. It turns out that studying this problem in general is pretty hard, and there are a lot of open questions related to this type of dynamical situation. But we'll leave that for another video. Today, we are going to talk about pushing a system in thermal equilibrium gently out of equilibrium. This is an example of linear response theory. We're going to derive what's called the Kubo formula. We are going to rely on the interaction picture of quantum mechanics. So if you need a quick refresher of the interaction picture, I did a video on that last week. So I'll put the link for that uh, in the description. Let's imagine some general quantum system governed by the Hamiltonian H0. This system is assumed to be in thermal equilibrium, particularly in the Gibbs state. So just to be thorough, let's expand what this means in the energy eigenbasis of our Hamiltonian H0. Let's assume that we've solved the eigenvalue problem of the Hamiltonian, uh, and we will label the energy eigenkets and energy eigenvalues in the following way. So we can expand the exponential uh, as the following expression. And of course, the partition function is written as the following formula. We will throughout this video be interested in studying the expectation value of some observable A, which in the thermal state, this expectation value uh, is given by the following formula. Here I'm going to write uh, the expectation value with two subscripts, beta and zero, indicating that it is a thermal average with respect to our Hamiltonian H0, um, and that thermal average is taken at the inverse temperature beta. So as of now, our state rho and our observable A are time independent. But let's say at t is equal to zero, we will turn on a brand new, uh, potentially time dependent external perturbation. We will write the new Hamiltonian as the following equation. Now, as you might have guessed in the interaction picture, uh, we are going to treat H0 as the free Hamiltonian and lambda times V of t as the interacting Hamiltonian we will assume that lambda here is quite small. Now we are going to assume that the perturbation changes the energy eigenbasis of the total Hamiltonian. So our previous uh, eigenkets are no longer energy eigenkets of the new Hamiltonian. I will hereby denote the interaction picture state as having a subscript i. Without a subscript, you can assume it's a Schrodinger picture state. The same will apply to observables. So first comes first, we know that in the Schrodinger picture, the eigenstates of the free Hamiltonian now evolve in time according to this new equation. So this is just the standard Schrodinger equation. We can re-express this time evolution in terms of the interaction picture as the following expression. So this is just the standard definition of the interaction picture state. 
Expanding the definition of the interaction picture state, we see that we can evolve it in time with the following expression, which links our time uh, t with the initial conditions of the interaction picture. I put the t is equal to zero here uh, to think to make things more clear, but this is just the energy eigenstate of the free Hamiltonian, so we could rewrite this as the following expression. Okay, so now from the video on the interaction picture, we saw that u of t, this time evolution operator, could be expanded with the Dyson series. And we will only keep terms in the Dyson series up until the first order. Uh, so this gives us the following expression. So here the interacting portion of our Hamiltonian or our external perturbation V is given also in the interaction picture. The interaction picture observable here is in general written in terms of the Schrodinger picture observable as the following expression, where we still write V as a function of time because we assumed that that might be the case. But you'll notice that this is more or less just equivalent um, as evolving this operator in time with respect to the free Hamiltonian. The operator V could certainly be independent of time in the Schrodinger picture, but leaving the assumption of potential time dependence of V in the Schrodinger picture doesn't really change the difficulty of our derivation, so we'll leave it in. So putting this all together, we can write down the expectation value of our observable A, uh, in time, and in particular we will write it as it was before, but we will insert now the time dependence of the free Hamiltonian's uh, energy eigenstates. Because we're working in the interaction picture, we know how the uh, free Hamiltonian's energy eigenstates are going to evolve in time under this new perturbation, and we can insert our definitions that we worked out previously uh, from the interaction picture into our expectation value. Doing so gives you the following expression. So notice right away uh, that the center of this equation, we have the equation of the time evolution of our observable A in the Heisenberg picture uh, under the evolution of the initial Hamiltonian H0. To make our lives a bit easier, I'm going to write this again with the interaction picture notation, uh, but I just wanted to point that out as I find it uh, easier to eventually understand the final expression as dynamics generated by the free Hamiltonian. So getting back to the derivation, we can then express the expectation value in terms of the interaction picture uh, as the following equation. So now let's do our expansion and approximation of the time evolution operator u of t, uh, as we remarked earlier, and only keep the linear term in lambda. This gives us back the following expression. While this term is quite large, uh, the term inside the expectation value is clearly a commutator, and we can simply express it as the following thermal expectation value uh, with respect to the free Hamiltonian. So the interaction picture subscripts uh, perhaps make the equation look a bit more complicated than it should. But the amazing thing about this result is that we only need to know the free Hamiltonian energy eigenvalues and eigenkets, and each of these interaction picture observables is just being evolved in time by the free Hamiltonian. So only knowledge of the free Hamiltonian is required. If we were being a little bit more relaxed with our notation, we could drop the subscript i and just assume that the thermal expectation value and the time evolution are all being performed by the free Hamiltonian. This formula turns out to be extremely useful. It's used to study charge and spin susceptibilities, for example, and it is tied to the fluctuation dissipation theorem, a powerful result in many body physics. Uh, but that's it for today, everyone. We'll end it here. I hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.